Hello again. We left off with uh, the death of Pepin the Short in 768, and now we turn to the reign of Charlemagne, sometimes thought of as the most glorious pay the most glorious period of the Middle Ages when Central Europe was unified. Pepin the Short died in 768 and was succeeded by his sons Charles and Coloman. The latter fo followed his father to the grave in 771, leaving Charles, whom he, we best know as Charlemagne, Charles the Great, as sole ruler. In Charlemagne, the Carolingian power reached its height. His was a long reign, for he died in 814 and thus was on the throne for nearly half a century, for more than 40 years without a colleague. A bold and skillful warrior, he greatly extended the borders of his realm. He was also an able administrator, whose organizing and directing genius actively concerned itself with all aspects of the life of his domains. Under his vigorous hand, important political, social, and ecclesiastical innovations were made, and for a time it seemed the, that permanent recovery had been effected from the disorders which had followed the decay of the Roman Empire. By his coronation as Roman Emperor on Christmas Day in the year 800, and in Rome itself, it might also have seemed, it might almost have seemed, that the preceding centuries had been a bad dream, and that the glories of the Caesars were not only to be revived, but also enriched and transfigured by the Christian faith of ruler and people. The act was not regarded as an innovation, for Rome still held the imagination of the peoples of Europe. Civilization was thought of as inseparable from it. The Roman Empire continued, even if with diminished borders and from Constantinople, and there was ample precedent for two emperors, one in the east and one in the west. Eventually, Charlemagne was recognized by two successive Byzantine rulers as entitled with themselves to the designation of emperor. Charlemagne was deeply and genuinely religious and conceived of himself as ruling by Christian principles. He was masterful, autocratic, cruel in at least some of his wars, and notoriously lax in his marital relations. But he was moderate in his eating and drinking. He could not write, although in his mature life he made some pretense of trying. And while he could read, he preferred to be read too. He was fond of the history of antiquity, but he took a special delight in the writings of Augustine, particularly his City of God. This work gave him his political and social philosophy, and he set himself to so far as possible in making it his realm, his realm, rather, the city of God. Possessed by this masterful energy and this religious motive, Charlemagne continued the reformation and improvement of the church, which was already underway. In the newly conquered lands, won from paganism, he created bishoprics, established monasteries, and appointed the men who were their heads. In the older parts of his domains, where the bishops were elected by the chapters with the consent of the people, his license was necessary. As the tradition of elections was weakened, he used his authority to place in episcopal chairs men whom he believed to be suitable, and to endow them with the revenues of abbeys. He encouraged the regular holding of synods. He himself presided at important, at important synods which dealt with theological doctrines, and had the major voice in the decisions. Charlemagne concerned himself with improving the structure of the church. The parish system had long been spreading in the Frankish domains and the countryside, and had been divided into parishes, each with its clergy. Many of the parishes and chapels had been endowed with lands by local magnates and for the salvation of their souls, but the donors retained to themselves and their heirs the privilege of naming their, the pastors. These rights could be transferred by sale, gift, or bequest. Under these circumstances, the bishop, beyond his function of ordination, might be permitted very little, if any, control. Charlemagne insisted that the bishops have the power of discipline over the clergy in their respected, respective dioceses. The bishops also had political and civil functions. Charlemagne's measures did not prevent many ecclesiastical endowments for being allocated for the support of his favorites, even laymen. Thus his biographer, Einhard, an intimate at his court and that of his son Louis, Louis the Pious, enjoyed the income of several important abbeys, 
and although married and living with his wife, seems to have been an abbot. Further to raise the level of the church, Charlemagne revived and strengthened the existing system of archbishops. He increased their number. Each was, in theory, to supervise the bishops in his province. The Miss, Missi Dominici, sent out to enforce the king's decrees, had authority in matters ecclesiastical as well as civil and military. More on Charlemagne next time. I'll put in a link to a, a series of videos we did. The first is on your screen, Solomon in all his glory. See you soon.